First item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Chair will entertain a motion. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Williams. Any questions with respect to the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We're now at public comment. Public comment is now open. Uh, yeah, please come up to the podium and uh, tell us who you are and uh, welcome. Thank you. My name is Cynthia Richardson and I am a resident of Waterloo Township in the northeast corner of Jackson County for 20 years. I'm here today because I have applied for a board position with WellWise Services, a, uh, Area Agency Agency on Aging. Uh, I'm interested in the position and I'm here today to express my interest because I'm not available to be here for the full meeting, full uh, county commissioner meeting on April 16th because I'm also uh, a member of my township's planning commission and we have a public hearing that evening and I've been a member for four years. I also provide administrative support to our planning commission. Um, I qualify, yeah, I bring to you uh, and to the board, I bring over 25 years of human resource experience. I have a master's degree in administration with Central Michigan University, concentration in human resource management. Uh, I also, um, I have three human resource certificates. Two of them are nationally recognized, one is globally. And uh, prior to my retiring in October of 22, I provided consulting, HR consulting services to the Society for Human Resource Management also known as SHRM. It's the largest HR association globally with over 315,000 members. And uh, their conferences attract over 20,000 HR professionals, so a very large HR association. I also, prior to that, was the director of talent attraction with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. And I provided uh, my team with talent attraction. We worked closely with um, the business services team at, at the MADC with attracting businesses to Michigan, whether they were starting a business in Michigan or expanding. And my team would help provide talent resources to those businesses, all of the colleges, um, Michigan Works, all of those resources a business would need to know about in a state. Um, so I have budgeting experience, I have program manage ma management experience, and uh, I'm very interested in helping to fulfill this position with, uh, and also to help the board members and WellWise to be able to serve its uh, clients in the Region 2 area. Uh, so I would appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. More public comment. Last call for public comment. Public comment is now closed. We now move on to committee items. First item is the minutes from last month's meeting. The chair will entertain a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Baer, Commissioner Snell. Any questions with respect to the minutes of last month's meeting? Hearing none, all those in favor will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We are now up to appointments. The first um, item for appointment is a public seat on the Department on Aging Advisory Council for a term expiring in December of 2025. The post is currently vacant. We have an applicant, Ashley Taluki. Thank you, Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Williams. Ashley Taluki is recommended for appointment to the, uh, recommended to the county commissioner for appointment. Any other uh, nominations from the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of Ashley Taluki will please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The next two spots are for the Sanitary, Sanitary Code Board of Appeals. Two spots for a contractor alternate and a well driller alternate. We've had no applicants. The chair will entertain motions from the floor, nominations from the floor. Hearing none, we will post the position yet again. And now on to Well Rise Services Area Agency on Aging. The first spot is a public seat expiring in April of 2026. The incumbent is William Richardson. The applicant 
is Cynthia Richardson, uh, from whom you have heard this afternoon. Are there nominations from uh, uh, nominations? Thank you, Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Williams. Any other nominations from the floor? Could you repeat that nomination? I couldn't hear it. The nomination is for Cynthia Richardson. It's been moved by Snell and supported by Williams. Now before us. All those in favor will please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Congratulations, Cynthia. Look forward to next week's action. The next public seat is for a term expiring April of 2026. The incumbent is Megan Kaiser. The applicant uh, is Robert Harvey. Uh, move the applicant, Robert Harvey. Support. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Baer. Any other nominations for that spot? Hearing none, all in favor of Harvey will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next spot is a public seat expiring April of 2026. The incumbent is Ken Wyatt, and he has applied to be reappointed. Support. Thank you, Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Baer. Any other nominations for that spot? All those in favor of forwarding Ken Wyatt to the County Commission for appointment will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, committee members. We now move to Mid-State Health Network, the SUD Policy Board Intergovernmental Agreement. Thank you for having us today. We were invited to come and discuss the intergovernmental agreement that is included in your packet. Um, my name is Amanda Itner. I'm the Deputy Director at Mid-State Health Network. I have with me Dr. Danny Meyer, who is our Chief Clinical Officer at Mid-State Health Network. Um, and part of your intergovernmental agreement, you will notice it is an agreement with 21 counties. You have a current agreement already that you've signed and is good through July of 2024. So we are asking for a renewal of this agreement for another three year term. We currently have about 16 of our counties that have already signed the agreement and returned them. We've come to Ionia County to come and explain the agreement and now we're here today with you to answer any questions that you may have on the agreement. The agreement specifically outlines the use and the requirements of Public Act 2 funds. It also speaks to our Substance Use Disorder Oversight Policy Board, which is made up of 21 county board members. Part of Jackson County, you have appointed Ed Woods, who is here with us today, to serve as the SUD appointee for Jackson County. Throughout that advisory board, we make recommendations on how substance abuse funds can be used within the 21 counties. So that includes prevention and treatment throughout the county. It can only be used on services, and so PA2 cannot be used for our administration or administration elsewhere. So we also include in our report at our board uh, status on how those funds are spent by providers, and by types of services if you're interested. And so at this time, we can take any questions on the agreement. Uh, let's put a, get a motion in front of us for the adoption of the agreement. Thank you, Commissioner Williams and Commissioner Snell. Uh, now questions with respect to the agreement. Commissioner Baer, please. Thank you. The uh, first document you have here in red, it says, Requested action by Friday, April 12. This is a committee meeting. The Board of Commissioners doesn't meet until after the 12th. So I'm not sure how the Board of Commissioners is going to approve your request by the 12th when the Board of Commissioners doesn't even meet by then. We understand that. That's okay. We were looking to get them back as soon as possible so we could have it effective for July. We understand you meet in... Um, after that, and so as long as we receive it, as soon as you're able to approve it, that is fine. Thank you. Commissioner Williams, please. Uh, thank you. So just one quick question. Um, I, you uh, did a really good job with outlining uh, what this is, and I appreciate that, but I was just was curious if there was any drastic changes from the previous agreement that we've had. Yeah, great question. I didn't cover that, so my apologies. There was three different changes that we proposed in the new agreement. One was clarification of an alternate. So you do have the option to appoint an alternate. 
And if the appointee is not available, that alternate can uh, attend the meeting in replace of your appointee and vote. Okay. Um, but if two members are there at the same time, only the appointee can vote. We also updated the non-discrimination language, so you will um, see some updates just to make it update compliant with law. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last one was the term. And so we just uh, amended the term September through August for your appointments to be consistent with our bylaws. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, nothing further, Mr. Chair. So the agreement here is between Jackson County and Midstate. The agreement is um, actually between Jackson County and 20 other counties and Midstate. But Gotcha. Okay, so what <laughs> what relationship does this agreement have with Lifeways? So with Lifeways, it's a it's um it's actually a separate a separate agreement. So through this agreement, you will provide the liquor tax funds to Midstate, and then we're required to uh, spend those dollars on services and supports for substance use disorders. So through that, then we approve contracts through our oversight policy board for those services. I believe LifeWays is one of those contracts that is providing some prevention services. And that's a, that's a similar structure to currently exists. That's correct. Okay. Further questions for Midstate? And we now have a, a motion before the committee. Any questions, any further questions? All those in favor of the motion to forward this to the... Uh, Tony, go ahead. Thank you. Getting under your intergovernmental agreement here. Talks about counties included, Aranac, Bay, Claire. There's a whole bunch of counties included. Who's going to have Who's going to have final say what happens in Jackson County? It should be Jackson County. How are What's the intergovernmental relationship between Jackson County and these other dozen counties? Yeah, so the intergovernmental uh, agreement includes language to create a substance use disorder oversight policy board. So that policy board then has ultimate authority on those PA2 dollars being spent in your county. And so you have appointed Ed Woods to represent Jackson County as part of that 21 county board. So we would have one vote along with 12 other counties. One vote along with 20 other counties. Oh, other. 20. Correct. Can we have an agreement just between Jackson County and you so that every decision is made is specific for Jackson County? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the mental health code requires uh, the use and form of the substance use disorder oversight policy board. So that is set in statute under the mental health code. We are the designated entity to receive those funds. So that is required for the mental health code. And so we wouldn't be able to have a separate agreement. Now we do have at Mid-State Health Network separate agreements with treatment providers, prevention providers in Jackson County for those services directly for the use of Medicaid and block grants. So the other funds that we manage here at the PAHP. And if I can jump it we we also uh, can only spend PA2 funds for Jackson County in Jackson County so the the PA2 funds for any of our 21 counties can only be spent in in the county that it, it's it comes from if, if something comes up with a particular prevention or treatment provider uh, mr. Woods is, is is on the oversight policy board and if there's a concern with a particular thing, it's something he can bring up, and any any commissioner can uh, can basically ask to either put off a vote on a particular county request for, for PA2 spending, uh, and then we can get more information and come back to it, and that's how it's usually processed. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. Anything further? All those in favor of forwarding this to the County Commission with a recommendation for approval will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next item is MSU's Extension Semi Annual Report. Welcome. Good afternoon. Sounds like good morning. 
Um, I believe you all have a copy of my presentation as well as um, an impact report from our Health Institute, but um, I want to point out that the um, PowerPoint presentation says March 8th. Today is actually April 8th, so that's one correction that is needed, so I apologize. I'm Mary Bowling. I am the district director for um, District 12 at MSU Extension, which includes Jackson County, as well as Hillsdale, Livingston, Lenaway, Monroe, and Washtenaw counties. And so I supervise the staff here in the Jackson County as well, Jackson County office, as well as um, the other five offices that I mentioned. MSU Extension, uh, we have four institutes that we're divided up into. And so just a reminder, I listed out um, the types of programs that we offer under those institutions. And um, just for your knowledge, we have um, staff members. Um, sorry, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have the staff members in our office, and we're fully staffed right now, which is um, has not been the case since I took over um, two and a half years ago. So I'm pretty excited um, with that little caveat. We have our, our final staff member joining us April 28th after she graduates from college. So as long as she comes in on April 28th, we will be fully staffed. So you can see the, the faces of our staff members. If you're out and about in the office, please feel free to... Um, say hello. Uh, in addition to these staff members that are housed here in Jackson County, we actually have staff throughout my district. Um, they may be housed in Washtenaw County or Monroe County, other counties um, that are also doing work here in Jackson County. Uh, one example of that is a staff member that's in Monroe County, and she um, manages our um, product center um, activities in this district and so that's uh, she helps food-based businesses get off the ground and running and so I'll talk a little bit about her work that she's doing here in the county as I progress throughout the slides uh, another example is our serve safe educator who's housed in Washtenaw County and she does food or uh, serve safe programming for uh, restaurant workers who need that certification in order to be able to safely handle food. And so we do that training here in house. Uh, we had a pesticide applicator um, workshop just uh, about a month or so ago. So um, with staff, not only from the Jackson office, but from Hillsdale County and um, Livingston County as well. So lots of staff working here in Jackson County, but these are the folks that are housed here. Some are camera shy, so uh, which is why we have the silhouette or the one new member who hasn't quite started. One exciting thing that we've added just in the last month is a nutrition instructor who speaks Spanish. And so she's going to be making a, a special effort to work with Spanish-speaking audiences here in the county, as well as others. But that will be one of the primary things she's um, trying to help us fill that gap where we have not been able to um, really service that population before. And she'll be splitting her time between Jackson County and Lenawee County to do that. So next slide. Uh, just a real brief overview of the number of programs that we actually held here in Jackson County last year was 44, um, but we had three over 300, almost 400 programs that were offered statewide that Jackson County residents participated in. A lot of those are virtual programming, um, but it just shows that you know we have that um, both and where we're offering in person as well as virtual and sometimes uh, folks from Jackson they'll travel to other counties for in-person workshops as well. Um, so we had 713 um, program attendees at those 44 programs that were held here um, and then over 1500 Jackson County residents that have attended programs. Um, our programs are open to all. Um, that's one thing we don't, um, you know, close our programs to anyone. So um, if there's a need here in Jackson County and it's something that we offer, uh, we open those programs to everyone. So just a little bit of nutrition um, information. Again, you have the, the full report from 2023, um, but a number of different programs held here in the county and then um, over 450 participants, and most of those participants are school-aged children. Um, not all, but um, in this particular program, especially um, the, we, we call it our FNEP program, which is the um, Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. So that um, program um, is mostly geared towards children. Um, 
and then our SNAP program that is for um, people who are eligible, income eligible for the SNAP Ed program, and we're trying to teach them how to utilize that limited food budget in a more nutritious way. So next. Um, next up, we have our um, consumer horticulture assistance. This is um, soil testing that's done. Folks can come into the Jackson office and purchase a soil test kit, whether it's um, a residential kit or a commercial kit. They can purchase both of those in the office. And then we also have a lawn and garden hotline um, that people can call in if they have issues with their um, lawn or garden and get answers in real time from our master gardener experts and horticulture experts. So um, that's in, under our Agriculture Institute. Also under our Agriculture Institute is the emergency response uh, for accidents involving livestock, which we shortened to E-Rail. Jackson County actually has a trailer that we've donated to the county that's specifically used for any um, accidents that involve livestock. And so if there's a, a, an accident on I-94 and you know it's got cows or pigs or chickens, um, even bees, uh, we have the equipment inside that um, trailer and we've done training with those first responders to show them how to use that equipment. We also have staff on call that are housed here in our Jackson office that um, can can assist with any of those types of accidents. Um, we had a very successful 4-H program last year. Um, the fair was successful. We had um, over 400 youth enrolled, um, which is a slight increase. I think last year we had 426, and this year we've got can, 430. Can we move the slide on oh, to 4-H? Um, thank you. 4 I keep H. forgetting 4-H. One more. Who's? To, oh, you're, <laughs> I'll give you a, a cue. We're almost done. <laughs> I have one more slide. Um, but um, we also have 126 volunteers, um, adults that are helping with our program. All of those volunteers are vetted through our volunteer system. And um, they they provide countless hours. Uh, we would not be able to have a, a valid 4-H program if it weren't for those volunteers who offer their time and assistance um, and help us with that program every year. And, and in the county, we actually have 22 active clubs um, for those 430 youth that are involved. So um, quite a few clubs ha have a number, um, a large number of folks. So we're um, making an effort this year to try and expand those clubs so that we can get um, more um, you know, not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but lower adult-to-child to ratio. Um, but each one of those clubs has at least two um, volunteers that are at, very active in helping those kids, you know, with all of their 4-H um, projects, but also looking at, um, you know, creating leaders for the next generation, too, and, you know, providing them with skills in um, how to manage their money, how to, um, you know, how does government work and, you know, voting and all of those things that make, uh, you know, people a great uh, citizen in our, our um, county. So with that, um, I'll turn to my last slide with just, just my contact information. I'm always available. Um, email is probably the best way to reach me, but that's my cell phone. So 24-7, you can reach me there as well um, and leave a message. They, they, I hope we don't have to reach you 24-7. <laughs> I hope so, too, but you never know. Um, so um, with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Questions for MSU Extension. Uh, Commissioner Bear, please. Commissioner Bear, with the uh, E-Rail response trailer, do you have any guess how many times that has been utilized? So the one in Jackson has been utilized once that I'm aware of. But we we are expanding the program Um through a grant from uh, MDARD, thank you, Michigan Department of Ag and Rural Development. So we're expanding that, and there will be a trailer placed in Monroe County as well. Um, and then on, I think Branch is the next closest county to Jackson. So as we expand, um, I think the Jackson one is one of four trailers that we initially put out there, and now we have uh, an additional um, four going in throughout the state so there'll be more spread out so hopefully they won't be called on too often we you know hope there's not um, any accidents involving livestock but if there 
is we're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And I failed to mention that Mr. Bear is on our um, advisory council for MSU Extension, so we appreciate that as well. And I have heard at townships uh, discussions of drills involving the trailer, so mm -hmm. the local fire departments are aware of it as well. Yep, and, and that new grant, we're providing additional training, so if people missed out on the first training or they weren't here um, for that first training, they, we can, we're doing at least two trainings every year as well. Thank you, Chair. We'll entertain a motion to receive the report. Thank you, Commissioner Bear and Commissioner Williams. All in favor will please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And now, well rise. Madam Director, good to see you. Congratulations on some new board members today. Or, well, Hello. next week at least. Well, good afternoon, and I'm always happy to come and talk today, talk to you, and it's usually once or twice a year that I make it, so I'm happy to be here today. You have your report ahead of you, and I just want to remind you that the report represents funding from October 1st through February 29th this year, and it's an annual report on funds spent. It's not representative of budgeted state and federal funds. It includes Federal Older Americans Act funding and state funding. And then just a note that contractors are permitted to submit transfer requests throughout the year for flexibility in case, you know, how they originally planned is not working out. So sometimes we see transfers between home delivered meals and congregate meals. And then in fiscal year 24, you know, we were, um, lucky to get um, our funding. And so this is the last year to spend our ARPA funding out. It has to be spent by 930 of 2024. So we're working hard with our contractors to make sure all those dollars are spent and used in our community. Um, fiscal year 25 is usually the, it's the third year of our multi-year plan. And normally on the third year, we're starting to de develop the next three-year plan. But this year, the state opted to extend the current multi-year plan to match that of the state plan. So it's actually going to be extended one more year. We still do, though, we'll, ho we'll hold a stakeholder hearing to get input from community members and stakeholders on what they'd like to see in our plan going forward and what they see as needs in the community. And that will be at our Brooklyn office on May 21st at 10 o'clock. The final AIP plan will be available on our website as, to, as soon as it's approved. And just a reminder on the process, we, we develop the plan, our board recommends approval, and then we go to the State Commission on Services to the Aging and present either in August or September. They approve it, and then that's, that's the final plan that um, we'll publish on our website. Some agency updates, of course, um, Megan Kaiser, who's been on our board for several years, decided not to renew her seat, so we'll miss her on our board of directors. She was, was, is a social worker by trade, so she brought a lot of understanding about the needs in our community and the needs of seniors and adults with disabilities, so she will be missed. Um, our new, newly elected members will, of course, have an orientation with them, and then they'll be starting in May, and our annual meeting is in May, so more to come on that, and it sounds like we'll have two new members. Um, we are coming up on one year, which is hard to believe, on our new building. So in May is when we moved into our new building last year, so this May will be a whole year in the building, and we still really appreciate the space and the services we're able to continue. Try it again. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, for the last couple of years, we had a groundbreaking for our new building and then an open house for our new building in May. That's the time of our celebrations. And this year, we're excited. It's 50 years of being an area agency on aging. So we are going to have a great celebration around that. And I'll make sure that you all have an invitation to that. It's on May 29th from 2 to 5. And then we have a um, event, a fundraising event every year for our Safe Haven um, program, which helps older adults who are um, victims of elder abuse. And so that's going to be in our building in Brooklyn on June 27th from 4 to 6. 
we um, this year we received some funds for caregiver resource centers. And um, this was something that all the area agencies on aging in the state received as one year funding that can be carried through March of next year. Um, but it's it's exciting funding. It's there's many of us are informal caregivers in the community, and this really came out during the pandemic when people had to step in to help their loved ones or neighbors because um, hiring direct care workers was a, a, a challenge. So. We're work, busy working on that, and we'll have more to share soon. And then I just want to share to show, you know, kind of the increase in the need for our services in the community. Um, between 20 fiscal year 22 and 23, we had a 17% increase in number of calls to our agency, and that just shows the needs of older adults and adults with disabilities in our community, and um, we've had to add some extra staff to, to help with those calls. We're proud of the fact that we still have a live person answering our phone, and that's important for our seniors in our community. Something else that we've started this year, it's called Connection Cafe. And as a result of the pandemic, many of our seniors are feel, feeling socially isolated. So we're offering this in each of our three counties. We serve Jackson, Hillsdale, and Lenaway counties. And um, we work closely with Danielle. We have one at the Jackson Department on Aging. And then we also have one in our office. So more to come on that, but it's um, been going really well. We continue to meet with our local, state, and federal lawmakers just to discuss the needs of older adults and adults with disabilities in our three counties. One day that you might want to put on your calendar is Older Michiganians Day, which is May 1st. And this is a longstanding day when seniors and advocates gather on the Capitol lawn in Lansing. And we have speakers, and we talk about the needs we're seeing for seniors. And so it's, it's a great day if you can join us on the lawn or there are some live stream options available too. So we'll make sure to share all of that information. And then I will just add that we will email all of the invitations to some of the events I just mentioned, the 50th anniversary Safe Haven event, um, Older Michigan Day, Older Michiganians Day and our public hearing flyer. So any questions for me today? Questions? Uh, you mentioned that the ARPA money is going to be committed and spent. What effect will the conclusion of that have on your activities? Well, it, you know, we've been lucky with that funding. We've tried to use it for things because we knew the funding wasn't sustainable. We have used it, though, a little bit to help um, meet folks on our waiting list and stuff. So that's something we're going to be working on here soon to look at our budget. But it, it is going to, you know, have an effect not only for our area agency on aging, but all of them around the state. Chair will entertain a motion to receive the report. Thank you, Commissioner Bear and Commissioner Snell. All in favor will please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Julie, for being here. And along that same vein, Danielle is here for the Department on Aging. Madam Director, good to see you. Um, good afternoon, Julie and I. We get together for lunch monthly just to kind of talk about what's going on between the two counties. And sometimes we think when we come here on the same day, it'll be a good opportunity to present at the same time together because we really do um, work well together um, on that mission of supporting the older adults in the community. Um, I wanted to uh, highlight the Soups On for Seniors event that we did in March. Um, this was just a, a, a fun night, um, a lot of support from the community. There were a few commissioners that were able to attend that, but we had over, um, well, close to 200 people attend that event. Um, it was very well received. Um, just the mood and the atmosphere that evening um, was very positive. Um, a lot of good comments about how the event was ran. Um, we had 83 items in the auction, so it was a very large auction for us. And if we looked at the average um, uh, auction item, you know, revenue from that, it was like $63.88, so it raised over $5,000 just on that um, part of the event. Um, there's some great pictures that JTV took. 
If you haven't I had a chance to view those, there's a link for that. Um, but the Friends of Jackson Seniors raised over $25,000 from that event, and that'll be something that they'll bring back um, when they meet in June to kind of decide what to do with those funds to support Meals on Wheels. Something they've asked of us is, you know, what are what do we need? Often at times it's uh, the capital things that get harder, and it's also something um, that people can relate to. So usually what we try to do is bring a picture of something to the event of what the funds went um, for the year before. Um, so we're thinking probably a Meals on Wheels van, um, but maybe we also are um, having to put some repairs into one of our ovens. So maybe we're looking to see what the life expectancy is on that oven and to see if that might be a route to also use for those funds. So. Um, Next year is actually their 10 year anniversary, so they're pretty excited, the board is, to see you know, how they can change up the event. They might be looking at like a, a live silent auction for some um, bigger items. Um, we also got a lot of compliments just even on the centerpieces, which you don't think of that could also be a, a fundraising thing that you could throw in to auction those off at night end. So just some new ideas. Um, the, board, the board is very engaged um, in supporting the Meals on Wheels in, in Jackson County. So um, more to come for 2025. I also just kind of wanted to give a snapshot of things that are happening at the Department on Aging for the month. Um, so I looked at the month of February. And so if you looked at um, just the meals program between the congregate and home delivered meals, um, over 30,000 meals went out into the community, whether that was something that people ate on site or that were delivered to their homes. Um, 732 people received um, home delivered meals and this is all funding sources for the month so again getting out all over Jackson County and providing that support to um, the older adults in the community. Our home services, when you think about home services, I'm thinking it's, a, it's more like when you're um, homemaking services, personal care, respite care, um, that 222 individuals receive support from our um, home care services, um, providing 1,259 hours of care in the community. Um, I also thought this um, was interesting information about our senior center activities. Just in the month alone, um, in February, 162 people were new to a senior center activity. Um, so when you talk about like uh, uh, well wise services and their community connections and trying to get, get older adults engaged, knowing that over 100, well, 162 individuals were new and coming in and participating in programs um, and trying to connect with others is so important. And I also um, noted that there was over 30 different activities um, that happened at the Crouch Senior Center during the month of February. And some of those things, when you think of Euchre, that happens like every Thursday. So that's like four times a month. Um, our exercise classes, we have classes Monday through Friday. So uh, fit after fifth day. Fit After 50, for example, is three times a week. Um, so there's a lot happening throughout the day, and they had like 30 different options. Are you looking for health? Are you looking for entertainment? Are you looking for education? You know, we're definitely um, tr trying to provide the most that we can in the senior center. Um, I also wanted to highlight um, something that we've been working on with our food purveyor is kind of like a food tasting event. It's a great opportunity for us to... Um, uh, get the seniors involved and find out um, different products that they might be interested in. So actually on April 16th, um, we're, we're doing the congregate meal out to the outside sites like at, uh, Park Forest, Norville, Napoleon, Spring Arbor. But at the Crouch Center, what we're doing is we're having um, the food purveyors going to bring in like Tyson Foods and different um, manufacturers, and they're going to demo out um, making a complete meal. So they'll get the protein and the vegetables, but they also get desserts. And they can kind of pick and choose and then sample those items and give us feedback on things that they like. We also um, tried to stress that we want to make sure these are affordable items, um, that's something that we can incorporate into our menu. So we're pretty excited to see what comes about from that and get the seniors involved in picking different options they would like to see on the menu as well. And on uh, one of the things I also wanted to highlight for a moment of excellence was just uh, a snapshot of a note from a senior. Um, and we, uh, Well Wise Services mentioned some of the different grants that we receive. And 
we were able to help um, a caregiver who was taking care of her um, mother through the caregiver supplemental services that we received from WellWise and help purchase an item to kind of improve the quality of life for that senior. Um, what they were able to do is to get a, a, a mobile lift um, that can help transfer the mom safely. Um, it was $300 item, just a little bit over $300. And when you think about something that's going to improve somebody's quality of life to be able to stay in their home, um, the senior was so appreciative. Um, she said it has greatly helped with my daily living. And so to get that note back from the senior is just so rewarding. And that's really what I have. Thank you, Danielle. Questions for Danielle? Commissioner Willis, please. Yes, uh, is there a restriction on the number of county commissioners that can participate in Fit After 50? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> all right, thank you, Danielle. We really appreciate what you all do. We really get to see it in the community and we hear a lot about it. Sure. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Danielle, during mm -hmm. COVID, <clears throat> you were providing meals to people that were in situations where they couldn't get out in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. If those people are eligible by age now, should they contact your office to, because they're not getting meals now, they only got them during COVID? Should they contact your office to see if they can get on the Meals on Wheels program? Most definitely, so? yes. If somebody thinks that they're eligible for Meals on Wheels, that's part of our process, and just give us a call. We take referrals from uh, family, the senior themselves, so anybody can call and make that referral and um, definitely go look at the program eligibility, make sure that they fit that and offer that service to them. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'll pass it on. Chair will entertain a motion to receive the report. Thank you, Commissioner Baer and Commissioner Willis. All in favor will please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. And now the, the health department. Madam health officer, good to see you. Good afternoon. Um, I, I will go over my annual, or annual report. It's not an annual report, it's a monthly report. Um, go over my monthly report. Um, one thing that, that is a common trend and theme throughout um, the past month or so is, is the amount of activity and busyness and increase in activities and things going on. Um, you know, starting from health education in our, in our programs within the schools, you know, they've really amped up in the work preparing for summer activities and things, um, you know, all the way through as we talk about measles and things like that with um, the clinic services and then, you know, EH. Um, it just seems like, you know, I can always say that, that we're busy doing things, but it seems like right now it's, it's everything all at once. Um, our health resource advocate program has been um, really busy in the schools. In fact, I think they're there all day at a couple different schools today doing a vaping presentation that has been very well received by the schools um, discussing um, all the way from um, elementary school through uh, targeted presentations towards the upper um, senior seniors in high school as well. Um, but different message, but same, same message and uh, talking about the harms and hazards of um, vaping. It's one of the things that we hear in the schools is a huge problem. Um, and they've been able to kind of start to address that need, um, provide some education, hopefully starting at a younger age as well. Um, and then reiterating that at the older at the above older levels as well. Um, our opioid health educator has been busy. Um, one thing to point out with there, a question that we receive all of the time is we, um, you, you as a board approved the RFP for um, outside agencies to apply for additional opioid funding. Um, we have not received additional settlement funding for that. That's still um, held up where, where somewhere within the state, not sure, um, but we haven't received any of that funding. So our RFP is ready to roll as soon as we start receiving money and that money comes in and we can have a tangible amount that we can say we have to give. Again, that's a, um, just a reminder that that's a, a 13 year cycle for that, that second um, settlement, group of settlement uh, fundees. So um, as, soon as, as soon as it comes in, we will get it out and get that money out into the community. Um, I apologize on the slides. I think it's two and three. Um, there's a good luck, spread luck, not germs picture that should be under the health resource advocate. There's money in that in that um, funding program really to reach out and, 
and if you drive around Jackson County, there's some a couple billboards around the county that that are you know hoping to target to reach people's attention and remind people to wash their hands and and not spread germs. Um, there's also a error in that heading. I don't exactly know, know what happened, but my oversight, my, my problem. But the um, marijuana oversight program did start back up in January and um, will run through September. Busy handing out um, marijuana lock bags. That's always a request. In the couple months that we don't have the program, we received numerous requests for that. So it's, it's well received. Keep that um, marijuana safe within the homes, especially against uh, away from children. Um, teen pregnancy prevention and a SNAP education program. There's a lot of numbers on there. The teens in the teen pregnancy program um, doing a lot of cons community service events. Um, this year they've taken a, an interest in the animal shelter. Last semester they um, created those fleece blankets, um, did the tied fleece blankets to donate to the animal shelter. Um, this semester they're working on creating um, and making some kind of toys um, that they can donate for that. And so they will work on making those and then send, take them out to the animal shelter. And the SNAP Ed has been busy this um, winter, January through March, working in the um, Head Start programs for the LANA program. Empowering Youth Today, this is a program where um, if you recall, I had mentioned we had been kind of on a hold because we didn't have a health educator for that program. Um, she is. Uh, up and running and really focused on hiring for the summer program, the Get Real program. We are promoting for that, trying to get lots of kids into that program this summer. So hiring for our coordinators and our teen mentors um, is underway. Um, community health, one thing to point out on here, there's some numbers on there, but really want to point out that our maternal infant health program um, underwent a really in-depth um, called a certification, but basically an audit of their program, a chart review where they come in for several days, the state comes in for several days and audits their program. And they um, were really nervous and concerned, um, not that, you know, what the work that they do isn't amazing, but that, you know, if a box isn't checked or a consent isn't received, that's, you know, that's a hit on the audit. But um, it came back last month and that was, a, they received 100% on that. So we're really proud of them and they were very excited. Um, that their hard work paid off. Hearing and vision programs and our dental assessment information is on there. Moving on to personal and preventative health. Um, big thing to talk about here, talked about it a little bit last month, but is the measles. It's kind of um, has come into our community. We've done a little bit of contact tracing. We haven't had an individual test positive in measles, but we had some overlap with um, Henry Ford and someone who had potentially been um, exposed in Washtenaw that came to Jackson County that we did contact tracing in that. But really, you know, the focus is on um, and spreading the word about immunizations. Immunization rates have gone down dramatically since 2019, and we really need to, um, COVID pandemic obviously didn't help that. And so, you know, now we're, we're faced with a point where there's quite a few unimmunized kids and adults that, you know, for, for whatever reason, um, they didn't get immunized and there are the, the herd um, immunity for measles is about 90%. It's highly contagious. So we need people to be immunized so that when it does come into our community, it doesn't spread throughout. Um, our WIC program numbers are in there as well. Last month was March, it was nutrition month. So, you know, we had some outreach and some um, information that went around about nutrition and just focusing on um, good nutrition. Obviously, that program in and of itself, that's where its focus is on mothers and young children. Um, but we did some extra outreach on that as well. Um, environmental health, environmental health activities. This, this, is, the, this is the big month for um, our license renewals for all of restaurants. So the front desk at the health department will be very busy this month. They go out at the end of um, license renewal uh, applications and letters go out at the beginning, end of March, beginning of April, and they're all due by the end of April. Um, so I don't know the number of restaurants that are in Jackson County, but every, every time you walk down by that counter, there's someone in there um, filling out their, their um, license renewal and submitting their um, fee for that. This year, you know, I can say that they, um, 
have been busy throughout the year just due to the, the, the weather. You know, a lot of times during the winter, our um, field program slows down a bit. They catch, have a little chance to catch up on some of the paperwork processes, but with the winter this year, they've been doing field tests and perk tests and doing well things for um, throughout the winter because the ground never really had a chance to, to solid freeze. So they've been doing that and we continue to see growth in that area. Last page on there, um, outreach activities. This is one of the areas where you'll start to see the health department, our spring, summer um, events will start happening where we participate in pretty much any event that has any kind of relation to us, anywhere where we can get our um, name and our services out there. We are at all the kindergarten roundups. Um, our immunizations programs are there, our um, health resource advocates, but really trying to get, you know, uh, the health department as a known entity and where they can, um, individuals and, and parents can receive services. Um, a couple measles articles on there if you're interested in, and that is it. Thank you. And questions for the health department? Commissioner Baird, do you have one? I'll get to Commissioner Kennedy in a moment. Did you have one? Thank you. It's a very expansive list of services you provide to our community. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing good work. And Commissioner Kennedy, please. How are you doing? Good. Just a quick question on the measles. Yeah. I was always under the assumption that since I was immunized as a kid, I believe in a couple series that I'm good. You're good. Oh, okay, because yeah. you mentioned her. You're good if you've been immunized. There are adults that, for whatever reason, um, haven't been immunized. Um, either they weren't immunized as a child for whatever reason, or, you know, the, the, the big problem with unimmunized and the increase in waivers um, that we have is there are people who can't be immunized for medical reasons or health or religious reasons. And so th there will always be an unimmunized sector of the population. Um, we want to encourage all those who can receive those immunizations to be immunized because that increases that percentage um, for that, you know, herd immunity. So, but you, if you've had the immunization as a child, you're good. I'm just thinking about uh, First Methodist Church has a back to school blast. They do invite a lot of uh, local organizations. I assume you, We're there. the health department, yep. you're good. Okay, just want to make sure. Um, because if I didn't ask, the lady who's in charge of organizing it, with whom I am well familiar, would be not happy with me. Yeah, there's okay. several. We are about every, if you, if there's an event happening in that, that, that would relate, that would make sense for us to be at. Um, we're there. Okay. We should thank, be there. Thank you for doing. Thank you very much for doing that. That, that helped me. The uh, chair will entertain a motion to receive the report. And I heard uh, Commissioner Willis and Commissioner Williams. Any questions? All in favor, will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Director. And now on to the claims. Chair will entertain a motion to pay the claims. Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Williams, thank you. Any questions on the claims? I think everyone has signed them. All in favor will please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, please take note. Uh, see other minutes. Usually the DHHS minutes are there. I don't see them. Reporting schedule next month for members' um, attention, Department on Aging, Health Department, Veterans Affairs, and Michigan Works Southeast. We're up to public comment. Public comment is now open. Any public comment? Hearing no clamor for public comment, public comment is now closed. Committee member comments? Hearing no clamor for committee member comments, committee member comments is now closed. And we will see you next month. We stand adjourned.